Hi everyone, my name is Brady McBride. I'm a PhD candidate at the Colorado School of Mines, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a cumulative roll bonding of 5083 aluminum toward low temperature superplasticity. Now, roll bonding has been around for decades, and it's commonly used to produce coinage in the U.S. Uh, currency system, but we're actually using this to um, lead to a lot of strain in material that leads to grain refinement. This grain refinement, we hope, can lead to low temperature superplasticity. Now, superplasticity is typically characterized by very high tensile elongations, often in excess of 200%, which allows us to form very delicate and intricate sheet geometries for the aerospace and automotive industry. Now, we set up a few hypotheses for this project. Um, the main one being, can we use this accumulative roll bonding technique to refine our market structure, which will give us a very favorable formability characteristics that allow us to produce high quality, high intricacy parts at a lower cost. Now, there are a few requirements for grain boundary sliding, which is a main mechanism of superplasticity. Uh, those being near equax grains, high angle grain boundaries, and a small grain size such that diffusion can happen um, on the order of the grain size. Now, the main mechanism where we get this high tensile elongations is from a high strain rate sensitivity, which leads to strain rate hardening. And what that means is if we pull a sample in tension, the sample will elongate until the point that strain starts to localize, and then it can continue to strain um, without rapid growth of a single neck that will lead to failure. For 5083 aluminum, this typically occurs above 500 degrees Celsius for about a 10 micron grain size. Now there's a well-known equation for steady state creep that's based on temperature and grain size, and we are hoping to be able to reduce grain size in order to achieve this low temperature superplasticity. Now let's discuss the microstructure we get after a cumulative roll bonding. Here's an EBSG inverse pull figure map that shows the grain size after five ARB cycles, and we can start to tick off some of the boxes as requirements for grain boundary sliding. We have a submicron grain size, and we also have a high, high angle grain boundary fraction. Unfortunately, we're still left with quite elongated grains. Though we have found that short static annealing heat treatments can actually uh, transform this microstructure into a more egrex grain structure. And we see that in EBSD inverse pull figure maps, as well as bright full TEM micrographs, where dislocation structures basically recover and go through continuous recrystallization to lead to near egrex, very clear grain boundaries. We've also complemented this with differential scanning calorimetry and found that this sort of transformation um, is characterized by the self diffusion of aluminum. And so this gives us our third requirement, which is that of near egrex grains. Now, if we have all these conditions, then grain boundary sliding is very favorable. And this is shown here in these EBSD inverse pull figure maps, where we can see throughout strain up to 0.75 true strain, we have quite a stable grain size, still about one micron or less. And also in our uh, inverse pull figures themselves, we also see a general weakening of texture, which is also highly indicative of grain boundary sliding. Now, there seems to be a certain limit of temperatures that we can actually have this low temperature elasticity. So we see this peak in tensile elongations around 250 degrees Celsius, and it starts to diminish if we go below or above that. And so what we found was below 225 degrees Celsius, we have insufficient lattice diffusion. Above about 250 degrees Celsius, we have significant grain growth. And so there's a sweet spot in between where we have moderate lattice diffusion to be able to accommodate grain boundary sliding while also minimizing grain growth. And this makes a lot more sense if we start to look at the diffusivities of aluminum in our system. And so there's two scales we want to be able to consider. The first being the interatomic, that's simply the, uh, the relative scale of individual atoms moving, and then the scale of the entire grains themselves. And so this gives us a few limits on temperatures. And then also if we look at boundary mobility, we want to stay below 250 degrees Celsius so we don't have excessive grain growth. And what this basically shows is there are a very small window between 200 and 250 degrees Celsius where we seem to have the best combination of parameters for low temperatures for plasticity. Now, taking this one step forward for an industrial application, we want to look at a biaxial strain state um, as opposed to the traditional uniaxial strain state. And here what I'm showing you are bulge tests with that biaxial strain state. So on the top, these three samples um, have been subject to five ARB cycles with about a one micron grain size. And you can see we had surface strains of about 85% um, after about half an hour of deformation. And we compare that to the baseline material, and that's this coarse grain 5083 aluminum with a 10 micron grain size. And you can see after a half an hour, we're still only about 13% surface strain. So this is really exciting work because it basically shows that we can get a lot of ductility through superplasticity about 250 degrees lower than what we can conventionally do with this ARB processing. So to conclude on our research hypotheses, we're able to use accumulative roll bonding to reduce the grain size and give us low temperature superplasticity. 
Now we're trying to fully characterize this material and understand its limitations and applications. With that, I'd like to leave you with my contact information, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.